Hello guys and welcome to my channel. My name is Jesper Offersen and uh, today we are going to talk about a uh, hair color. So uh, basically there are two ways that you can lose your hair color and that would be uh, that it is being bleached from the inside and that is maybe what you have mostly heard about. So like uh, the uh, hydrogen peroxide which is produced inside your body through various uh, processes uh, will actually uh, bleach your hair from the inside. So uh, as we get older it um, it is more difficult for the body to uh, keep track of uh, the hydrogen peroxide so keep it in check and therefore uh, we get uh, grey hair as it is being bleached from the inside. So uh, if you would like to do something about that you can uh, watch some of my other videos which I can link to up here and that will tell you what to do in order to uh, prevent that. So if that is not enough and uh, you might find that if you are doing as I explain in the video uh, many of your hair strands will start to uh, be stronger in the color, it will be a more saturated color, but there will also be hairs that might not respond to that. And the reason for that is most likely that um, the problem with those uh, hair strands is that they are simply not producing uh, the pigments in the first place. So if we are looking at uh, the hair colors, then uh, there is something called uh, eumelanin and then there is something called uh, pheomelanin. And uh, the pheomelanin is uh, the color which will give you a reddish brownish uh, hue. And uh, if you are taking the, uh, if you are having the uh, eumelanin in uh, the predominantly form, then you will have a more sort of a dark black to brownish uh, color. And uh, hairs, uh, the hair colors are mixed uh, as in they are made up of various degrees of these uh, pigments. So uh, what can you do in order to uh, boost uh, the uh, melanin uh, in your body and in your hair particularly? Um, it is so that um, there are two uh, amino acids that you need and uh, one of them is uh, phenylalanine and the other one is uh, L-tyrosine. And um, it is so that what happens is that if you take a uh, phenylalanine, which you get from your food and you can take it as a supplement, I will come back to if you should do that or if you shouldn't do that. But what happens is that in the body, you will, through your diet, get a uh, tyrosine and you will get a uh, phenylalanine. And uh, the phenylalanine will be converted into uh, l tyrosine and uh, the l tyrosine that is what you need in order to uh, create something that is called dopa uh, quinone and uh, that is made through uh, or with the help of um, an enzyme called uh, tyrosinase so that will uh, transform tyrosine into uh, dopa quinone now um, what happens is that um, phenylalanine uh, can be converted into tyrosine uh, so you might think, well, can't I just eat uh, phenylalanine? Well, it turns out that that would not be uh, that good a choice, apart from what you get from your food. But you should not take it as a supplement. And the reason is that studies have shown that if you do that, then it is so that your seen will uh, have difficulties uh, entering the cells where uh, the pigments are produced. So uh, even that phenylalanine is transformed into uh, l tyrosine in the body, then uh, it also competes with uh, getting into the cells where uh, the color is uh, produced. So that those cells are called uh, melanocytes. So therefore you will not take a supplement with a phenylalanine. What you will do is that you will take a supplement with a l tyrosine And uh, what happens is that when you take a l tyrosine it will be converted, as I said, into uh, something called dopaquinone. And uh, further from there, it will uh, be determined by uh, another amino acid uh, which I have spoken about before which is called a cysteine if it becomes uh, eumelanin or it becomes a uh, pheomelanin so uh, if a uh, cysteine is present you will get uh, the color which is red to brownish and that is the um, pheomelanin uh, color that will be uh, the dominant uh, color in your hair so uh, what I have noticed is that uh, when I take a cysteine as I do uh, as I show in the uh, video you can see up here about how to prevent uh, having too much um, hydrogen peroxide in your body um, then I noticed that apart from that my the few gray hairs I, I, I mean I did not have a lot of gray hairs I had a very few of them but I noticed that they 
completely became uh, their original color. Um, but what I also noticed is that my hair started to take on a more reddish hue, whereas before it was more a brownish golden color, where now it's more into the uh, red tones. So what I thought is that basically what I could do to test it a little bit more is that I could uh, um, lower my the amount of uh, sustain that I take daily in order to see when uh, the um, hydrogen peroxide will be high enough again to my hair becoming gray and I lose the reddish color and see how much should I make it uh, more precisely if I didn't want uh, the reddish color. Well it's not a problem for me so uh, but it is just something you could um, make a little experiment uh, about how much to take before it's enough but be un Till that you start to get this more uh, reddish brownish uh, color. So another thing uh, I would like to tell you about is that something that is called uh, phenyl uh, ketonuria and uh, you might have heard about that um, condition and that is something you can uh, that you are basically you are born with it so it is an inherited um, genetic uh, disorder if you like and uh, what it is uh, and why does it relate to what I'm talking about in this video well it relates to it because what happens uh, with that disease is that or that condition is that um, phenylalanine cannot be broken down in your body so if you have uh, too much uh, phenylalanine in your body in general you uh, might run the risk that um, it competes with tyrosine in order to get into the melanocytes in order to produce pigment. So if you have by nature too much phenylalanine in your body because your body cannot break it down then uh, you will get a, a pale skin, your eye color will not be that strong and your hair color also will not be that strong. So that is uh, when you're seeing people that has this condition you might say well it doesn't really look like there is a problem but that is simply because that if it is uh, properly controlled then uh, they will be on a very special diet that is very low in uh, phenylalanine and that basically means that a lot of uh, protein rich foods like meat and dairy and um, that sort of thing they are kind of like uh, of the menu and instead they are uh, supplementing with a lot of various amino acids in order to get um, the amino acids that they need but uh, keep uh, the intake of phenylalanine uh, low. Another thing uh, about this disease which is maybe why you have uh, perhaps heard about it in the first place is that when your body cannot break down phenylalanine it will uh, give um, a very potent odor which can be really a problem for the person uh, because it's it's so strong that if it's not controlled uh, by through the diet then uh, having a job and so on can actually be uh, quite uh, difficult um, in respect of your uh, surroundings so it is quite a, a problem but the reason I talk about that disease uh, condition today is that it is about phenylalanine and uh, that will give you uh, less uh, pigment uh, in your skin and in your hair and in your eyes and so on and uh, therefore, uh, coming back to why you are not producing too, uh, enough of the pigments to get your hair color back to what it was as you are aging, is that uh, if you have uh, too much uh, phenylalanine in your body, then it will uh, compete with the tyrosine. And therefore, uh, you shall not uh, take supplements with the phenylalanine uh, in it. So that was just a, a little uh, sidetrack there to make you understand a little bit more how it actually does impact uh, a person apart from what you can read in the uh, scholarly articles which I will link to in the uh, box below. So how much uh, L-tyrosine do I take? And uh, do I take L-tyrosine or do I take uh, the acetyl uh, tyrosine form because when you go out shopping you might be uh, persuaded to take something called acetyl tyrosine. That is not a good idea. Acetyl uh, is put on to various other amino acids in which it is not uh, a problem like in uh, acetyl carnitine uh, where in your body your body can uh, take the acetyl group away and use a uh, carnitine as it should. Um, the thing with um, acetyl uh, tyrosine in your body is that it is not so easy for the body to uh, get rid of the acetyl group for that particular amino acid and therefore when you are taking acetyl tyrosine you will not get uh, as much tyrosine uh, in your body that will work in order to help you with your 
hair color as if you were taking the uh, classic uh, L -L tyrosine form in its um, normal state, so an unaltered form. So uh, there might be uh, some uh, shop assistants that will tell you that, oh, that's all sort of nonsense and uh, you should take this one because it's much easier to um, dilute into water or it's much more soluble in water. And yes, that is absolutely true. But the problem is that when it uh, gets into your body, then the body struggles in order to get rid of the acetyl group and therefore uh, you shall not take it. But for the producers of it, when they are mixing it into other products and so on, it is really good for them that it is easy to mix with water. Um, but uh, it's just not good uh, good uh, if you would like to get something out of it that works for your body. So uh, what do I do? Well, I do take the l tyrosine and I use a company called Bulk Powders. And no, I don't have have nothing to do with them at all. I just use a lot of their products, but I have also used uh, products from other companies like um, one called the uh, My Proteins, and that looks like this. And uh, this one here is uh, from uh, Bulk Powders. And um, it, l tyrosine as such, it, it's not something that costs a lot, not at all. It's a, a relatively uh, cheap uh, amino acid. And uh, it doesn't taste of anything, in my opinion. And um, what I do is that I put it uh, on my uh, breakfast, so uh, I, I mix it into my uh, fromage frais in the morning. And uh, before I did that, I just had a little taste of it on my finger in order to make sure that it didn't taste awful. Like um, if you, for example, have ever tasted uh, an amino acid called uh, arginine, you will know that something like that you would not just mix into your uh, fromage frais because it tastes absolutely awful. But uh, this um, l tyrosine it really, it, it doesn't really taste of anything. So I just mixed it in and uh, I, I would if I did not know that I put it in, I would not know that it was there. And it doesn't alter the consistency or anything like that. So um, it is really easy to, to deal with. And uh, one thing uh, that there might be people that are using l in order to uh, get a bit more energy and stuff like that. So maybe it's a good thing to take it uh, first thing in the morning instead of uh, late at night before you go to sleep. Well, I have done both, uh, but um, I, I don't really see a, a difference. But at the moment, I do it in the morning. Uh, and after doing that, I read a little bit more about it and I thought, uh, I read some articles that it might give you a bit of an energy boost as such as some people think it does that but basically it maybe is uh, more like a, a mental boost uh, but I will make another video uh, explaining more in detail about uh, that issue with the uh, l and um, how it can uh, help uh, or can it help but uh, if it can help with uh, sort of uh, mental uh, health related um, things like uh, stress. So um, yes, uh, this is uh, the one I use and it's from a company called Bulk Powders and uh, I will link uh, to some uh, links below uh, where you can uh, find some of these uh, Amazon uh, links. So uh, yes, it doesn't cost a lot and here are, there is uh, 500 uh, grams and uh, I think I normally order uh, one kilo uh, every time and uh, I think it's, I can't remember how much it is, but it, it may be 10 or 20 pounds for a kilo or something like that. So it's not overwhelming. And you can, uh, I think you can buy it down to 100 milligrams to begin with, if you like. Um, so uh, yes, uh, that was uh, bulk powders and their uh, l tyrosine And you can, of course, get it in other places. All those uh, places where you would normally buy uh, supplements, like in, in um, sports shops and stuff like that, uh, I'm sure you can uh, find it. It is easy to come by. So uh, yes, uh, how much do I take? Well, uh, I have chosen, uh, after looking at uh, or reading a lot of scholarly articles, a lot of uh, tests and um, all that sort of thing, and I have uh, to begin with uh, taking uh, two grams of it. So I take two grams of it in the morning and I mix it into my uh, fromage frais. And uh, in the beginning I mixed it into a glass of water and if you do that you will notice that it becomes completely milky and uh, it will not kind of like it uh, dissolve properly. Uh, so uh, you just uh, slim it up and then you uh, drink it or you put it in your yogurt or something else. Uh, it doesn't have a taste as I say and um, yeah, it's easy to, to deal with. And uh, how long should you wait in order to see some uh, response? Well, as you can see for uh, my hair here, um, 
I will not be able to see any sort of a response. So uh, this video here is about uh, the scholarly articles and the theories behind what is uh, going on. And uh, I will link to uh, a little study uh, about some uh, black uh, Labrador retrievers. And uh, there the uh, scientists, they noticed that if they gave them uh, much more uh, l tyrosine than is normally recommended, then they saw uh, a difference in the color of the coat. So it became much more uh, dark, um, as you uh, would expect from a, a black Labrador retriever, but apparently it became much more dense in the color, and uh, they measured that in uh, various ways. So what they concluded was that if you take uh, l tyrosine above uh, what is normally recommended, then uh, at least for black Labrador retrievers, they will get a much uh, darker uh, coat. So uh, what else will I do in order to test this uh, for myself as such? Well, uh, I will feed it to my husband and I will take a before and after picture and we will see in a couple of months time if it had any uh, effect. By the way, he was very blonde as when he was a young guy, so his hair color will never be as dark as my hair color because I was born with dark hair. So it also uh, it makes a little difference what sort of uh, hair color you are born with. So um, it will bring back uh, the color that uh, you have, uh, you were born with, to a certain uh, extent. But I'm sure that a lot of uh, people that are uh, blonde as children, then when they grow up, they will notice that they are no longer blonde. They have this sort of um, Dark is a graphic sort of grayish uh, color. Um, and that color, if you take a L2C, will start to be more into the uh, reddish brownish hues. So uh, yes, I will make a follow up video to this one here, uh, but that will take uh, some months time so we can see uh, an effect. Hopefully uh, we can. If you would like to see more of this sort of videos, please subscribe, hit the bell and do all the things you must do in order to be notified when I upload more of this sort of videos. Thank you for watching. See you and bye. Thank you.